Been a while since we've had a bad balance video, so here we are. I wanted to look at Sagat from Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Release Sagat is often described as the best character in the lifespan of the game, and that might just be true. We'll be taking a brief look at Sagat's kit, and then we'll talk about the really broken parts, and we'll polish it off with a little look at his balance history and what they did to fix him. I'm not going to deep dive into Sagat's normals, but I'll talk about the standouts. He did have a 3 frame crouching jab with surprising range, so he could pick up most punishes. However, it didn't have much frame advantage, so it was troublesome for linking. In pressure, most Sagat players used his crouching short, which was plus 3 on block, plus 6 on hit. This is actually a true block string, even though Sagat's lights don't chain. Low short linked easily to itself, or even to his crouching strong. Low strong cancels, and this link was one of Sagat's main confirming routes. Though you could also just cancel from short if you preferred. Stain short had enormous range, and was in fact Sagat's farthest range cancel. Up close it does 40 damage, but from afar it actually does even more at 50. At just about all ranges it combos to low tiger shot. This sequence was quite abusable on block. Because Stan Short comes out so quickly, it's very hard to counter hit, yet it outranged many characters' medium buttons, and the pushback and meter build for this sequence were good. We'll talk more about this later, but approaching Sagat was very difficult for most of the cast, and often as soon as they got in, he would instantly push them back out with this cancel. And on hit, Sagat could even get reaction confirms out of it. It was also common to cancel Stan Short into Tiger Knee. Thanks to the high pushback, Sagat could reliably space his knees, making them very plus regardless of how the opponent blocked. This could even be used to create looping pressure, which was difficult to escape without committing to a reversal. Stand Strong is technically Sagat's strongest special cancel, at an impressive 100 damage. However, the activation range is extremely close, and it had a terrible hitbox which often whiffed on crouching or recoiling opponents, so most Sagat simply used his 90 damage low strong. For the record, most characters have to use heavy normals for this kind of damage. Unlike the Shotos, Sagat's low forward was a bit too slow to link into, but it had nice range and moves his body forward, including in cancels. It was common to see low forward in scenarios where low strong might be too far out to work. Low fierce was occasionally used as a poke. Generally, when poking with it, you'd be too far out to link anything afterwards, so it was rarely used in combos, but it had good startup and very high damage. Stand Roundhouse was maybe Sagat's best normal. It's two hits with a very impressive 150 damage. The first hit cancels to super, but you probably would never do that. The damage distribution between the two hits is outright cruel. The first hit is only 40 damage, while the second hit is 110. What that means is that even if you only hit at the tip, it hit harder than most characters' heavies. Normally you see the inverse with long pokes, with the close hit doing most of the damage. This normal was nuts for halting the opponent's approach. It had very high pushback on block, great damage and pushback on hit, and it even anti-aired reliably. There were whole matchups where Sagat could just win by pressing this normal and nothing else, most famously Zangief. There's actually a decent amount to say about Sagat's jump normals. He did have a cross up, jump short. Jump fierce had very high damage, 140. Standard was about 100 for most characters. And most notably, jump strong had a retracted hurt box. What this meant is that this normal would actually beat lots of attacks which were intended as anti-airs, meaning Sagat could jump in against many characters who lacked invincible anti-air special moves. This made it very hard to stop his jumps in some matchups. He did have a few command normals, including an overhead. But the most notable command normal is towards Roundhouse. It wouldn't hit most standing opponents at all. Though it does hit Zengi for other Sagats. It whiffs on all crouching characters. But if it hit a mid-air opponent, it left them open for a juggle. And the normal itself had juggle potential, so you could also juggle opponents into it. I'll talk more about the implications of this in a minute. Also, it was a quick Kara cancel Sagat could use to massively increase the range of his special moves. Sagat also had a step kick, towards short. It hit low, but that's not a huge deal since most people would down back if they were trying to block anyway. It's plus 3 on normal connect, so Sagat could link out of it even without counter hit. Not as good as Ken's step kick, but it did increase the range of his offensive presence, and the returns on hit were better. And like towards Roundhouse, he could car cancel it into special moves. The startup was longer, which hurt it, but it had more range to compensate. Towards Roundhouse was usually better, but there was a time and a place for each. Notably, to jump over a fireball from afar, the opponent had to wait for it to get a certain distance away. 
Sagat's car uppercuts let him pick up anti airs from those distances and timings. Time to go over his special moves. This is where Sagat really shines. Every single special he has is really great. First, the Tiger Shots. Sagat has two different Tiger Shots, one high and one low. If you've ever fought a Sagat in any Street Fighter, you know all about these, but let's go over them anyway. Low Tiger Shot is like a traditional fireball. It has good startup, decent recovery, and a good hitbox. It travels quickly or slowly depending on the version. It does nice chip, and it pushes opponents away if they block it. High Tiger Shot was better on almost every metric. It started one frame faster, recovered five frames faster, and was significantly better on hit and block. The recovery was so quick, the opponent could jump predicting a high fireball and still eat an anti-air. The downside of High Tiger Shot is if the opponent crouched, it would whiff. This is obviously a huge drawback, but High Tiger Shot definitely wasn't useless. For example, it still clashed with other fireballs, so we could use its short recovery to overpower any other character in Fireball Wars. If they wanted to just crouch to reset the Fireball War, that gave Sagat time to reposition. That's how Tiger Shots work, but they were pretty extreme in this version of the game. First, they were both quite strong at 70 damage, whereas most Fireballs did 60 or 50. They had a large amount of pushback and very little recovery. If you were just walking in and blocking, you'd get pushed back as much as you were walking in, and you'd be taking chip all the while. Even the low shot recovered quickly, which made jumping in at Sagat difficult. Jumps are normally the main weakness of fireballs, but for Sagat, forcing the opponent to recklessly jump could have even been called a strength. Focus dashing fireballs was possible, but due to their high damage it was a bit risky. Moreover, from close he could simply cancel into a fireball, which would punish focus. Also, and this is a personal pet peeve of mine, because of Sagat's color scheme and the appearance of the fireballs themselves, it was often hard to tell a normal fireball from an EX one. If you focused a fireball that ended up being EX, you'd take tons of damage and get thrown far away. Not to mention, Sagat could just throw fireballs so fast he could often punish focus dash in general. For the record, both EX High and EX Low Tiger Shot did an impressive 150 damage. And they recover even faster than normal fireballs, so jumping over them is asking to eat a Tiger Uppercut. And EX Tiger Shots travel extremely quickly. And throwing Tiger Shots also built meter. If Sagat was chucking fireballs and you were just blocking them, he was building bar and you weren't building anything. So Sagat basically had a permanent meter lead on most characters. Even if the opponent had a fireball too, Sagat's fireball recovery being the shortest in the game meant he could overpower theirs with his own, so he'd still be getting meter faster than them. As I said, this is where High Tiger Shot really shined. And if that's not enough, fireballs were actually incredible combo routes for Sagat. His large dash meant he could reliably do 2 bar fireball FADC combos. Compare Ryu's fireball FADC combos. And EX Tiger Shot, either version, was a 1 bar ultra setup in the corner, while being plus on block. If Sagat's Fireball was insanely good and there was nothing else, that would be that, but it had near perfect synergy with Tiger Uppercut. Fireball plus anti air is a common combo for many Street Fighter characters, but Sagat does it the best of anyone. In vanilla, Sagat's Tiger Uppercut does extremely high damage 140 for the light version, 150 for medium, and 170 for heavy. And because it's only a single hit, it does full damage in FADCs or trades. For those who didn't play SF4, having a Shoryuken sure FADC was very powerful. Basically, for two EX bars, you could cancel your uppercut to a dash. Uppercuts are already insanely good for their invincibility. Grab versus uppercut is a true 50-50, and that's so much better when the uppercut is safe. But on hit, uppercut FADC was a launch, and Sagat's step kick was a fantastic juggle here. Good for picking up another cool 140 damage on reaction. He could also land Ultra here, and Sagat didn't have to choose between Step Kick and Ultra, he could just do both. Again, compare Ryu. Ryu also had FADC Ultra.
but if he didn't have Ultra, his next best struggle was to spend a third meter on an EX Sudoken. And if you didn't want to spend a third bar, or if you didn't have a third bar, Ryu simply had no juggle route. Most characters in Vanilla had a hard time setting up an Ultra at all. Not only did Sagat have the best Ultra setup in the game, but he also had a great option even if he didn't have Ultra. Remember, to approach Sagat you had to weather a storm of Tiger Shots, and often by the time you got in, Sagat would have 2 meters. So you had to contend with the possibility of eating a safe reversal into 300 damage even once you got close. Sagat pressures you to jump so much with his fireball spam. Imagine finally jumping a fireball on a prayer, and this happens. But as good as anti-air tiger uppercut FADC was, it gets even dumber. Sagat doesn't even have to FADC. He can deliberately time his tiger uppercut to be early, and it will reliably trade with air normals. If this happens, Sagat gets the same combo for no meter cost, instead taking 100 or so damage. And I should mention now that Sagat had 1100 health, tied for the third highest in the game. Combined with his zoning playstyle, Sagat usually had lots of health to spend his currency. You might think to yourself, well, I just wouldn't attack unless it would be a punish. That way he won't land Ultra. But it's actually not a choice Sagat even has to make. It's a built-in OS. He can input FADC every time, but the FADC simply won't come out on a trade. If he has the meter, he's landing the Ultra, one way or another. It's often somewhat safer to do uppercut FADC backdash. If it hits, Sagat can still juggle Ultra here, and he can actually juggle his fireball if he has no Ultra meter. On Tiger uppercut counter hit, the opponent is launched on usually high, allowing Sagat to juggle towards roundhouse after a backdash, which further incentivizes random uppercuts in neutral. Again, invincible, safe, and round ending if it works. Another little quirk of Sagat is he can land Ultra after EX Tiger Uppercut, even on a Grounded Connect. He can actually do this in every version of SF4, though it's quite precise to time. Still fantastic to have a 1 bar Ultra setup in the back pocket for emergencies. Sagat's last special is Tiger Knee. The damage is pretty good, albeit a bit lower than Tiger Uppercut. On block it can be punishable, depending on how it hits. Up close you're very unsafe. But from afar it can even be plus, especially on crouching opponents. It's often used as Sagat's punish route since it has nice corner carry, but it can lose a hit or even fall out from afar. So Tiger Uppercut or EX Low Tiger Shot are used as longer range enders. The most notable difference this move has to later versions is that in vanilla, it's easier to space to B+. In fact, Sagat has many block strings which guarantee a late connect. Opponents simply blocking would take some chip damage, then have to hold a button into more chip, or even a block string into another deep tiger knee. This looping knee pressure was actually very hard for many characters to deal with. I don't have too much to say about his super. It was 2 frame startup, which meant unlike his uppercuts, it could beat safe jumps, but I don't think I ever actually saw anyone do that. It could also juggle into Ultra, but only in the corner where Ultra lost damage. Sagat players didn't generally preserve their super meter, since Fireball or Uppercut FADC were so powerful. And there's not much to say about Ultra 1, which was his only Ultra at the time, since it didn't have much neutral use. Much more important are its setups, which I've already mentioned. Let's go over Sagat's game plan before we get into what made him so strong in vanilla. While I'm talking, I've got some tournament footage up in the background. Sagat's zoning was oppressive to deal with. 
From far away, he could just throw fireball after fireball, and the opponent would have to slowly navigate their way in, while forcing their way in quickly with a distant jump would be vulnerable to Kara uppercut. If the opponent did focus forward dash to approach, they'd be taking on gray health, and they'd be especially vulnerable to trades or mix-ups once they were close. The safest approach would just be to walk forward and block or neutral jump low fireballs while crouching high fireballs. Sagat would be building meter for every fireball he threw, while the opponent would be building no meter with this strategy unless they had a fireball of their own. And if they did have a fireball, Sagat could overpower them in a fireball war, meaning he'd be throwing more total fireballs, building more total meter, and getting more total chip damage. And if the opponent did get all the way in to push something like a throw or low overhead mix-up, Sagat would likely have the meter for a safe invincible uppercut, so he could deny the opponent's mix-ups or even push his own. If the uppercut hits, he gets huge damage, and if it's blocked, he's reset to neutral, throwing fireballs again. Now, everything I've described is not what makes him broken. In fact, all of those things are true in every single version of SF4. I had to rewrite this video half a dozen times because it felt like I was overselling his strengths. And I realized something as I did my research, which is that Vanilla Sagat is not nearly as overpowered as I remembered. So the question becomes, was Vanilla Sagat even broken, even worthy of a bad balance video? The answer is yes, absolutely, for two reasons I barely touched on. The first is not precisely an issue with Sagat himself, it's that most other characters at the time had significantly worse tools at dealing with this kind of zoning. For much of the original cast, Vanilla was their weakest version, sharply contrasting Sagat who was at his peak in Vanilla. If you watched my Vanilla Vega video, you might remember I said Vega didn't have a good way of dealing with mid-screen fireballs until the addition of his Ultra 2. But he wasn't alone on that front. There were tons of characters where their best answer to a fireball was an ultra that didn't exist in vanilla. And a lot of characters' supposed anti-fireball options just didn't work against Sagat. For example, Blanca slide with low-profile fireballs, which was his main option against most characters. But Sagat's heavy fireballs were so fast, Blanca couldn't easily react from close. While from far away, the slide would fail to reach. This meant the range where the slide actually worked against fireballs was extremely precise, and a mindful Sagat would just not throw fireballs from that distance. And Blanca's EX Blanca Ball, his invincible option to beat fireballs, required an EX, required charge, didn't deal much damage, and didn't knock down. Unironically, Sagat could afford to just eat these. And this was ten times worse for characters who were deliberately weak to fireballs, such as Honda or Zangief, who just couldn't fight Sagat at all in vanilla, and still struggle with him in later versions. If you've made it this far in the video, you're in for a treat, because the second reason vanilla Sagat is so broken is extremely hilarious, and very easy to demonstrate. His damage is almost double that of every other character in the game, literally for no reason other than that he's huge. There seems to be absolutely no effort to balance his damage, and in fact, it really feels like the devs simply sought out to make Sagat the top tier. I'm going to show a few common attacks or combos that Sagat might land, first in vanilla and then in super. I want you to sit back and enjoy the massive damage cut he got between versions. To further stress Sagat's damage in vanilla, I have to emphasize he got full connect ultra from any combo to uppercut. Look at the damage, just starting from uppercut. Now compare the damage from the handful of other characters who got Shoryu FADC ultra.
Many characters in vanilla didn't even have a good ultra setup at all. The only other characters in vanilla who could easily land full connect ultra were Ryu, Rufus, and Sea Viper, and they were all higher top tier. Actually, Sakura could too, but she was a bit mediocre for other reasons. Finally, let's end off with how they fixed him. As I've already shown, the main feature of Super Sagat is he had absolutely massive damage cuts across the board, but notably, he actually kept Trade Ultra when it was removed from everyone else, albeit it's not nearly as rewarding. They lowered the damage of both Tiger Shots. And they reduced the meter build if it whiffed. Stand Short became two hits. And only the first hit cancels. If you land it from afar, you only get the second hit. So this removes Sagat's ability to cancel this normal at long range. In addition to being lowered, the damage of Stan Roundhouse was redistributed. It's now 80 damage for the first hit and 40 for the second. So landing just the second hit lost 70 damage compared to Vanilla. Jump Strong's retracted hurtbox was nerfed. More importantly, a lot of characters with mediocre anti-airs were buffed, so all the retracted hurtbox jump normals became much worse in practice. His new ultra was very good. Generally it had the same setups as Ultra 1, so it could be used in most matchups, though it was noticeably weaker than Ultra 1 in Juggles. More importantly, it had a few more setups and was significantly better in neutral than Ultra 1, particularly against Fireballs. It became Sagat's main ultra in those matchups. Finally, Sagat got a new special move in Angry Scar. It cost a bar to use, but after he used it, Sagat's next uppercut did even more damage than it did in Vanilla. Developers have even said it was intended to be a way to let Sagat keep his Vanilla threat level, albeit for a price. It also had more juggle potential than regular Tiger Uppercut. It gave Sagat a few new combos, but none of them were that notable. Much of Sagat's balancing actually came from buffs to other characters. If you got an Ultra 2 which could punish fireballs, the matchup was night and day. Now you could hang back and let Sagat zone you, while you just focus projectiles and build Ultra Meter. Since you weren't trying to get in, you weren't risking much by taking on Grey Life, and once you built the ultra, you could either shut down Sagat's fireball play, or else punish him with an ultra on reaction. A lot of horrible matchups became fair, notably Vega, Ken, Blanca, and especially M. Bison and Guile, who both formerly lost badly to Sagat, but now actually beat him on average. Here's a picture of the tier list from the end of Vanilla. As you can see, Sagat has a winning matchup against every single character in the game except Takuma and Dalsim, who are the only characters who could actually play neutral against him, and he has a bunch of 7-3 matchups. And now here's a tier list from Super. You can see Sagat is now around the middle of the pack. Many more 5-5s, a few losing matchups, and his only 7-3s are against Zangief and T-Hawk, who are the kinds of characters you'd expect to struggle against zoning. It's actually a very impressive balancing job, I think, considering how much they had to scale him back, and how much they managed to preserve his fundamental playstyle. There might be a few other things I forgot, but this seems to be enough for now. Vanilla had a few other characters I'd love to cover. I think Zangief, Ryu, or Seth would probably be the most interesting. Before that, I'll probably make a shorter video on some characters Ultra or Super. It might be interesting to do a video on a single matchup too. Vanilla, Geef versus Seth would be fun.